So you're probably familiar with Mike Lindell from his pillows, I imagine, but also his radical politics. And at least as of right now, he's a big money guy on the right. Very soon his entire fortune will probably be owned by Dominion and Smartmatic. But for right now, he's got a lot of money that he's giving to Republican causes. But how did he go from a guy who sells pillows online to someone who's tied in with Donald Trump and legal challenges to the election and Newsmax and all of that? Well, um, right now at 2IT.com, uh, we've got a great write up of some of the ways that he got radicalized. And it all really has to do, Jonathan Larson did some amazing researching in this. And we're only going to skim the surface of a complex story. It has to do with a shadowy group known as the Fellowship Foundation or the family, which Jonathan Larson has done great reporting on for a number of years. And so we're gonna give you details as to how the family brought Lindell into right wing politics. And there's a lot of interesting information here. But as we go through this, one of the reasons I think this is so important is that the the family and right wing politics, you can sort of get the Christian, you know, Christianity on right wing politics is a long standing thing. But this is something that has drawn in a lot of Democratic politicians as well, including people like Barack Obama. Their yearly events, that's a thing that Democrats go to as well. So understand that as we're talking about how they created the monster that is Mike Lindell. So um, what we basically have is the 2016 National Prayer Breakfast. So that's one of their yearly events. And Mike Lindell ended up going to this particular instance of it. So how did he end up getting invited? Well, when you ask him, he says, I was invited at the last minute by my friend Stephen Baldwin. You know, as happens, I guess. But apparently it wasn't really, there you go. Um, it, so is he actually to blame though, Stephen Baldwin? Well, not necessarily. So Stephen Baldwin has his own ministry uh, called the Stephen Baldwin Ministry, which sort of makes sense. And there's an individual named Wilfred uh, Job who uh, runs that particular ministry. And it appears that it's actually him, Wilfred Job, who has close ties with the family himself, who invited Mike Lindell to the 2016 National Prayer Breakfast. Now, the interesting thing about that is, what does it matter necessarily? Well, I don't know, but it sure seems to matter to Lindell because when you ask him about, for instance, about Wilfred Job, he says, I don't know who you're talking about. Which is fine, except that he Job is actually listed as the president of the Lindell Foundation in 2017. And when you ask Mike Lindell about that, he says, go to jail. Go somewhere and find yourself a nice jail cell because that's where you're gonna end up, goodbye. Which <laughs> is a strong reaction when you ask him about a guy he claims not to know about. But anyway, look, we're gonna get into a lot more. How he gets there is just the beginning of the story. But I did wanna give our panelists a chance to jump in and talk a little bit about Mike Lindell because he has become so important not only for his election challenges, but all of the you know the wannabe Fox News are desperately trying to get him to do advertising for them. Yeah, so this story has lots of twists and turns and it's in really interesting roller coaster ride because in a sense you begin to develop some sympathy for Mike Lindell, which or at least I did, mm. and then, well, John disagrees, uh, because he looks like he's kind of a, as deranged as he is, there's a certain innocence to him. And he seems like he's getting led around by the nose by this family. And and in comical ways, that which we're gonna get to in a, in a minute, okay? And the fact that he can't see it is amazing to me. Um, and and they're using him for their own purposes. Again, we'll get to the heart of that in a sec. But when you look at the Job situation, you get the deranged part of Mike Lindell. Um, so the guy runs your foundation. If somebody said to me, "Hey, here's Jim Jablowski, and it turns out he ran your foundation in 2017," and I said, "Wow, I don't know Jim Jablowski," uh, I wouldn't think I wouldn't then follow up with, "Oh yeah, you're going to jail." <laughs> But I don't even know Jim Jablowski, I don't know what he did. I don't know if it was right, I don't know if it was wrong. Why would you go to jail for a guy? To <laughs> but his immediate reaction is, that's it, I hate you, you're going to jail. I've got all my people lined up. And maybe these kind of folks got him thinking, hey, we're connected to all the powerful people in the world. Trump, Obama, right now one of the leading Democrats that's involved in the family is Chris Coons. That's Joe Biden, one of Joe Biden's top Advisor, senator from Delaware, one of his top friends, one of his uh, chairs of his campaign in 2020. So when you're connected to guys that powerful, you might think I could send people to jail for even asking me a question. Mm -hmm. And so he also called Jonathan, our reporter, lying scumbag, because 
<laughs> right? I can sort of see it. <laughs> so, um, but the, the Ben Carson's coming into this story. But guys, one more thing before John goes back to explaining more and get Rayvon in here is that this story is super interesting because it, it, it's kind of opens a curtain, lets you see how the right wing puts things together and how they get money men like Lindell. And why are they interested in Lindell? Because they love pillows? No, they want his money, Lebowski. That's what this is about, right? But it's also a little bit different because most of the money guys in the right wing have actually their own purposes. They're fracking guys or they're, you know, toilet paper people like the Coke Industries, etc. And big toilet paper has its own agenda. They want tax cuts. And then when they give to Shapiro and Prager, they have a very well defined agenda. And they know they're purchasing propaganda. In in Lindell's case, a Big Pillow doesn't need any of this. Okay, <laughs> he just kind of seems to get suckered into all of this. Read it for yourself because it's an amazing read. Uh, but they, so that's what I want you to keep in mind as John's telling you this story. But Ravana, any quick thoughts here? Yeah, I just would like to say that I side with John and I do not have sympathy for Mike Billow at all, <laughs> even reading this story. Um, but it does really show the way that organizations uh, like the family use figures like Lindell sort of as useful idiots like puppets to further their uh, very unpopular agendas so that they can sort of cloak themselves and shield themselves from any of the blame or the blowback from it. And the democratic participation in the system or the participation of Democrats in the Democratic Party is disgusting. I know we'll get into that a little bit more later. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really where it gets, it's not understandable. I, I get that this group is gonna try to get right wing politicians to give them what they want. The idea that Democrats would be a party to it literally at all makes, well, I'm not gonna say it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. Clearly, to them, their interests seem to overlap. Um, but okay, let, let's talk a little bit more about Lindell and uh, his time at the 2016 uh, uh, prayer uh, meeting. Uh, and whether this is a demonstration of him being uh, a useful idiot, very useful, very idiotic, or maybe this will lead you to have a bit more sympathy for him, Jenk. So he at one point gets taken to a breakout session with Ben Carson, who's running for president at this point. He's brought into the breakout session by Larry Ross, who is the family's spokesperson and a key leader. So what did they bring him to hang out with Ben Carson, a guy they were hoping would be president because they wanna have a great conversation about pillows? No, he's like trying to set up Carson with a potential donor. But Lindell says he heard a prophecy in the room. He says, and I really, really wish at this point that I had a Lindell impression, but alas, I don't. In that room, we were praying. A guy in there prophesized in there. He said, two of you in this room are gonna become great friends and change the course of history. And Ben and I are great friends. And he said, and I'm sitting there though, as they're praying and he's saying that, I go, I go, if one of them's me, who would the other be? And this. Things started happening to me. Oh no, but that's what that's I'm a grown about. adult. I know, but John, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He has this almost childlike innocence. When they bring him into the room, they say, "Oh, we did a random group of people from the prayer breakfast gathering, right?" Random group: Ben Carson, <laughs> Stephen Baldwin, Mike Lindell, who's incredibly rich. That seems and, pretty random and, to me. <laughs> and one of the leaders of the family. Mm -hmm. You schmuck, that's obviously not random. Again, if you bring in one of the Koch brothers and he's a sophisticated actor and he goes, oh, okay, I get it, you guys are pitching me something, that's fine, okay, pitch away. <laughs> and maybe I like it, maybe I don't, right? But this guy has no idea, he's like, oh, what an amazing coincidence. My daughter is eight years old and whenever she sees a coincidence, she thinks we're Barbies and that someone is playing with us, uh -huh. okay? <laughs> and she goes, oh, we're Barbies, right? She figured out simulation theory. Yeah, oh, exactly, God. right? And Lindell is a grown ass man, runs a large company. He's like, oh my God, we're Barbies. Like, what a coincidence. <laughs> we all happen to be in the same room. Yeah. Oh my God, two of us are gonna change the course of history. I wonder if it's me and the guy I need to give all my money to. The bar is so low, like to impress him. Like, <laughs> one of you will be hungry. And like, his stomach rumbles and he's like, I'm gonna give someone every dollar I have. <laughs> No, but anyway, look, let's give the connection to Trump though, because other stuff happens 
spirituality, turning the path of the nation, blah, blah, blah. So um, Carson eventually drops out of his presidential run after only briefly leading the field and other than that, it was all Trump. Um, so Carson told Donald Trump about Mike Lindell, who then gets uh, invited to meet uh, Donald Trump. The day before the meeting, Lindell donated $2,700 to Trump's campaign, $17,300 to the Republican National Committee, and $20,000 to Trump victory. That's before meeting Donald Trump. He's already ponying up a BMW effectively in campaign donations. And look, it's not a coincidence. There's a source that Larson has. It says, if you can convince him, oh, we're doing this amazing work, he might just be the kind of guy that gives you $10 million. Or he might be the kind of guy that puts you on his charitable foundation board and gives you a salary. And indeed, that's actually what ended up happening. Perhaps we can go to those details in a bit. But yes, the money started to flow, the jobs on board started to flow. I don't know if there was a spiritual reawakening, but the money side of the equation certainly seems to have worked out for the family. Yeah, I keep going back to, look, it's a free country, so if they're right wingers and they want to collaborate, and and Mike Lindell's evangelical Christian, these guys are evangelical Christians, and and they and he puts his money behind that. Funny enough, God bless, right? <laughs> it, it is what it is, and they of course they can do that, right? But that that's part of the amazing part of the story. Mike Lindell does not start as an evangelical Christian at all before he meets the family. So we have this impression of Lindell from the Trump years where he's already a religious radical, but he was not. They take this super impressionable guy who has had addition problems in the past. I mentioned that in light of a couple of things. And at that point he had a foundation and it was to help people with addiction problems, right? That sounds now, good. And I'm not saying that the guy's a good guy in any way, shape or form. I mean, you see, I mean, he calls our reporters Lying scumbags and 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 says they're going to jail. And here I am saying he has a certain childlike innocence, but but he's got a foundation that it makes sense and is trying to help people, I guess, in his own way. And of course, as soon as the family people come in, they redirect it, and then it starts going to evangelical causes instead. Hey, who does evangelical causes? The family does. Now let's talk about how nefarious it is, because. Yeah, the right wingers who are rich are looking for tax cuts, deregulation, don't fight climate change because we're in the fracking business, etc. They have very specific economic agenda. In this case, the family has a very right wing evangelical agenda, not just in America, but across the world. So in previous cases, and Jonathan's got amazing information about the family. You should read all of his stories. We'll put the links down below, jump around, look at them. Because the whole thing gives you a sense of exactly how right wing works. So they then send people to places like Uganda, where they're helped to try to pass a law that executes gay people. Now remember, Democrats participate in the prayer breakfast, that's the thing that gives them all the power because their leaders get to put up pictures with Barack Obama and the Clintons and Chris Coons and all these people. And they give them credibility and validity and they go, "Oh, you see that? And then they use it a lot of times against LGBTQ folks, that's the primary target. Yep. Uh, but in other awful instances as well, and when they see a guy Honestly, a sucker like Lindell, they think, oh, you don't want to help people with addiction issues. No, 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 no. You want to give us that money and we'll use it against gay people. And and that's the very nefarious part of this from my perspective. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people like in the family, especially recently to Sharia law, which I think is absurd. Like this isn't Sharia law, this is Christian fundamentalism. Like that's that's what they're doing. It's not, <laughs> you don't have to compare it to something that's not happening here in the United States. This is something very real that is happening here. It's Christian fundamentalism and they're using people like Lindell who, you know, he seems useful, but he's definitely an idiot. But to further their deeply unpopular policy goals, you know, things like anti abortion initiatives, abortions, like 70% of the American people support abortion. Mm -hmm. You know, a majority of the American people support gay marriage. But, you know, they're able to do this from the shadows using people like him. And it's, it's just horrific. And the Democrats going to the prayer breakfast, 
is disgusting. Joe Biden went just this last February. And I'm sorry, but Joe Biden, who has been in uh, in politics, particularly he was in Congress forever, knows about the family. He knows what their goals are. He knows what they're doing behind the scenes. I mean, hell, you just need a Netflix subscription to know more about the family now. So with that knowledge, how could they continue to participate in it? It is beyond me. By the way, I, what I love is when we, the reporting that we do, the objective of reporting the TYT investigates does, then leads to actual change. Because then when we took this reporting to several progressive members of Congress that were unwittingly attending the event thinking, oh, it's to promote a religion of all sorts, right? And that's the marketing that they put out there. And you show them what they actually do. They go, oh, no, 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 I don't want any piece of this. And they've backed out, right? Now, conservative Democrats, establishment Democrats have not at all backed out and you should ask them, why are you still attending this thing that leads to significant harm to a lot of members of our community and to people in general and helping them do the marketing? When they go, whether it's in America or in other countries, with this aura of they know super powerful people, it gives them enough power to be able to push and win in those countries. Because people think, oh my God, who do they have behind them? Is it Biden? Is it Trump? Is it both? My God, I gotta listen to these guys if I want anything out of America. Yeah. And and so that is that's a terrible phenomenon. And Mike Lindell getting roped in by these guys ironically puts a spotlight on them, which maybe can begin to clear up uh, this issue and have Democrats stop giving these guys legitimacy. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.